What's going on, YouTube fam? This is your boy J Money here, and I'm bringing you guys something new today. You know, it's nothing really too new. It's video discussion-ish kind of things. So, um, you know, again, this looks familiar to what some other tubers do. Um, again, I don't want to be a copycat, but you know, I feel figure this is something um, that should I should do maybe a couple, a few times. You know, you know, just have a nice um, broken down discussion. Um, something that doesn't require um, you to essentially look at the screen in case you're driving or something like that. So, anyway, that being said, uh, let's go ahead and get on to the topic. This topic is going to be something that I probably, that I needed some time to really think about. Um, because a subscriber of mine did mention that, hey, some World Chalice cards got revealed and all that stuff, but, you know, you would never talked about them. And I've been well aware of what these cards are and what they do. You know, but there's, you know, there's something that's just kind of, you know, this is something that I really need to, to actually break down as a World Chalice player and as someone who plays the World Chalice deck. Because this is what this discussion is going to be about. It's not going to be about how good they are generically. It's going to be about... How useful they are in the actual World Chalice deck itself. If you want to continue playing that deck as well as I do. So, uh, before I get into it, I do want to go ahead and mention that, hey, um, you know, the, you, there's, there's been a few videos where I have discussed my disdain for how every single World Legacy archetype continued to get all this support, direct support, and multiple, you know, multiple times, and the World Chalice archetype, the very first archetype of the World Legacy storyline, had yet to get support. And you know, it left a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah, you can get all this indirect support, but you, but the deck really needed direct support. You know, they actually needed World Chalice names, and that's something that we finally got. You know, so with that being said. Um, at the time of this video being made, there is two um, monsters that have already been revealed. One being a fusion, which is, I believe, Imduck the World Chalice Guard Dragon, or something like that. Um, I'm not looking at the cards, so I don't know their names. And um, Iv the World Chalice Miko, which is a Synchro. So, we're going to go ahead and break these cards down. Um, the let's start with the fusion. Uh, Imduck is the is a level nine uh, dragon wind fusion. And it's got three thousand attack, and I think it either has two thousand defense or three thousand defense. Again, I'm not looking at it. Um, its materials is three link monsters. Um, you you can also summon it by tributing three link monsters, which is important. Or not tributing, but you know, like contact fusion. So. You know, you don't have to play fusion spells to make this. However, you can activate Super Poly and fuse off your opponent's board. So that's something you should note. Um, now, um, its effects are, um, I believe it can attack all monsters on the field once each. Also, if it battles a Link Monster, I do believe you can banish a Link Monster with the same Link rating as the one that it's battling. And immediately destroy it like a Catasser or an El Shadal Construct. And you can deal damage equal to the attack. Um, and this would come in really handy if you're playing a deck that has a wide link pool. Now, with that being out of the way, now let's go ahead and look at the, the juicy one, the Synchro. You know, because the Synchro is, is incredibly good. It's incredibly generic. I'm not going to deny that. But we're going to go ahead and look at the stats anyway. Um, it is a level 5 water spellcaster, um, synchro tuner, which is important. Um, it's got 1800 attack and 2100 defense, and it has three effects, I believe. So, the first one being, you can treat any World Chalice vanilla monster as a tuner, which is huge. It means you don't have to go out of your way to play tuners if you're playing the actual World Chalice deck. That's great, that's fantastic. Um, when it is Synchro Summon, you can add any World Legacy card from your deck to your hand. That is also huge. You literally now have a way to search an extender on demand 
um, without the need of firewall, like summoning World Legacy World Armor, if you were actually playing that card. Um, so that's great within itself. Also, winning a sim from the field to the graveyard, or not win, if, my bad, no mistiming. Um, you can special summon one World Chalice monster from your deck or your graveyard. That is also really huge. It floats, just like the Link monsters, except you can summon from the deck or the graveyard instead of the hand. Alright, now we got the stats out of the way. Um, what do I think about these cards? Well, Imduck is a good card. I like it. Um, Ib is a great card. Um, but, there's one... There's one just fatal flaw with both of these cards, and that is the fact that they are both not Link monsters. Now, why is this important? Well, let me go ahead and go into detail as to why this is so important. Because these are not Link monsters, um, you are now your deck is now going to be comprised of less Link monsters if you choose to play this card, which doesn't sound like a big deal. But in reality, it still is, and I will go ahead and explain that why in two scenarios. One being um, the way World Chalice seems to be headed. Now again, we only got a Fusion and a Synchro. I'm pretty sure there's going to be an XC. Like, almost guaranteed there's going to be an XCs that's going to be revealed later on down the road. Considering these both are being released in a set that is an XCs based set. You know, uh, Dark Neo Storm. So it's probably going to be an Ingirsu ish kind of uh, uh, XCs, and they might they might make one more link, which would be an Orm based link. Um, I don't know, um, but I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. But anyway, um, there's two there's two issues with why um, you know them not being link monsters is a big deal. There's two reasons. One um, is um, if you look at the decks now with these cards, um, the most prime example, you guys have seen it all over the internet, I'm pretty sure, with um, the build that makes, you know, Ib and makes your, you know, searches your World Legacy bur burgeoning or burgeoning. I don't know what to call it. Um, you know, they're playing Calamities or playing Boral Savage Dragon and all that other stuff, which is fine. But, you know, do in doing so, you're playing a lot less Link Monsters um, which, again, this deck still wants to do. This deck still wants to pump out links. Uh, to its very core, it wants to pump out links. And, you know, when you're playing all these other cards, it doesn't help out with that. And and thus, it, um, it decreases the amount of flexibility the deck has. And I'll end up explaining that in two different ways. One... Let's go ahead and backtrace a little bit and look at the current Synchro build of World Chalice. Um, if you are just doing bare bones Synchro build, you are playing five Synchro monsters in your extra deck. That's huge. So that means literally a third of your extra deck is taken up by Synchros and not Links. Um, which means you don't have space for tri things like Trigate Wizard. Some builds don't even have space for Summon Sorceress and things like that. And that can be a real big issue in a lot of ways. You know, you don't have enough space for, you know, multiple Imducts, um, Link Rebo. All these things are really, really important. Um, you know, an issue with, you know, and they're good. When it gets going, it's really, really good. You know, if you get that Rescue Ferret and... You know, you can make your Blazar and you can make your Nat Beast all in one go if you resolve a Rescue Ferret. But that's the main issue. Rescue Ferret has... You need to have access to a Rescue Ferret to access a third of your extra deck. And that's a problem that I've been having with this Synchro build. Is the fact that you can go into like multiple Saryujas and still not get access to that Rescue Ferret. So you're forever locked out of that one third portion of your extra deck unless you got into your glow up bulb then you have access to one of those five cards you know and now somebody's going to probably comment down below and say um make the argument that oh um the build that i the new build that i played 
that uh, after a firewall got banned relied on soul charge. However, um, soul charge is to complete my board. Um, I don't need soul charge to access my entire extra deck. I can still blow through. I can still summon every single monster out of my extra deck um, and not need that soul charge. You know, outside of just a Seraphonite because it's not a link monster. So, there's that. Now let's go ahead and fast forward to the builds that people are playing right now. You know, well, okay, backtrace one more. So, because, you know, the build needs to resolve a rescue fair for this to work, and, you know, that one specific card, um, the deck strategy becomes much more linear. So, I just need to put that out there real quick. Now let's fast forward to um, what people are doing now with, you know, the burgeoning and the calamities and the Boral Savage Dragon and all that stuff. It's really good. It's really good. However, as I've mentioned before, it takes up so many non-link extra deck monsters. Uh, eh, so many non-link extra deck monsters that it becomes a problem if your opponent, like, has a certain setup. If they have a certain setup. Uh, you're not going to be able to do much playing because of the fact that, hey, I don't have an Ingear Suit by Extra Deck because the Extra Deck space is just that tight. I don't have things like Trigate. I don't have anything like Nightmare Phoenix. You know, I don't have all these these toolbox cards that I can use in multiple in a multitude of situations, which is really, really crucial. And so, yeah, making boards of, like, Boral Savage Dragon, uh, Calamities... Um, summoning your Heart Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss, and all that, it's really nice, but if you're going second, you can't get into those cards, you know? You know, that's the biggest deal that uh, I've been looking at right now. Because this particular build is playing so many non-link extra decks, um, not to mention, you're also forced to play Guard Dragons, which literally only pushes the strategy in one direction. Um, you know, so, you know, look at all the extra deck monsters you have to play, you know, not only, you mean, you can play an Orum, and you may be able to fit an Ib, and maybe an Imduck, but that's, that's just about it, you know, there's not too many paths you can take, you literally are forced to go down one path, because of how the strategy plays out, you know, you're, you know, you're having to go through your guard dragons first, you know, you gotta, you know, you got to go through your Ritzy, and you got to make your Pitsy, and you got to go through whatever the Link 2's name is. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'll just butcher it. You know, then you got to play a Borloot Savage Dragon. Then you got to play a um, uh, a Hot Red Dragon Arshin Abyss. And this is not even including the Red Eyes Link monster that some of these builds are playing. And, you know, now you're starting to notice an inherent problem here. Because of this, you know, your this strategy only leads and can only go one direction versus previous builds of World Chalice where I can I can um go I can go through my Orums and then I can make my Ningirsus and I can complete my board without having to make Saryuja. Um I can make Saryuja um I can do Saryuja first and do my combo there and not need to make Orum. Um there's so many different paths I could take to still get to where I need to go. The problem with a build like this is, um, you know, it's because the extra deck space is this tight, The it can only go one direction. You can't go multiple directions depending on what the situation calls for. You know, you don't even have space for a Suyuja, which is scary to think about, you know, to be able to fix and unbrick your hand. And all that stuff. You know, you don't have Space Turn and Gear, so you can't get those draws. Um, you can't even think about Trigate. Um, you can have Link Spider, but again, Link Reval, there's just so many options that it would lack if you're going second to where it's just like, if you can't get into Ritzy and Pitsy, then you can't get into, you know, your Red Eyes Link monster. You can't get into the Link 2. You can't get into uh, Boral Savage. You can't get into... Um, your Hot Red Dragon, Archfiend, Abyss, and that's something to think about, you know, so if paths like this get cut off, you're done, you know, that's it, and so, again, I like the, um, I like the Ib, the World Chalice Minko, and I like the M-Duck 
will challenge Scar Dragon, but the fact that they are not Link monsters means that you are stuck almost playing a more linearized fashion rather than playing, you know, how you'd want them to be played with Links. Now, um, and one more problem with Ib the Watchhouse Miko is that because it is a synchro and not a Link monster, um, you're putting, you're investing materials into a monster that's not worth multiple Link materials. And that can be an inherent issue when it comes to your main strategy of World Chalice. There is a, about one way I thought off the top of my head that you can mitigate this, and that is Chris Straw Needle Fiber. However, we it's not it hasn't even been confirmed yet at the time of making this. And what do I mean by this? So, you know, I will just go with the most common scenario of having a Venus or World Legacy World Chalice. You can have a Genix Undyne to do this as well, but. I'm doing Venus for an example, so let's say I summon Venus, and I get into all three by Shine Balls. I can link one of them into an M-Duck, and use the extra normal summon to tribute my Venus and summon my World Legacy World Chalice. Then I can proceed to use the World Legacy and the M-Duck into an Aurum, and I can use M-Duck to float into a Chosen, or not M-Duck, uh, World Legacy to float into a Chosen and a Lee. And that's really good because, again, with World Child's Miko, you can treat a vanilla monster as a tuner. Now you can use Lee to search either Guard Dragon or Beckoned. Either or, it doesn't matter. Now you can synchro into your Miko with your Lee and your Chosen. Search your World Legacy Succession. Again, really, really good effect. Now, now you can sit here and um, link the Miko and the one of the two shine balls into crystal needle fiber use that and summon out um, either a steam the cloak or a globe bulb when in this instance we're going to use globe bulb and Miko will float into a guard dragon or beckon depending on which other one you searched with Lee and you know um, now you got your value back because the link monster you went into with Miko is also giving you a monster which could have been that other link material that Miko was worth. However, if you're not in a situation to where you could link climb like that, you could be in a pretty bad spot, especially if you're wanting to make your an Ingersu draw three play, because if the World Chalice Miko is not worth two materials. Now, there's some things that I if I were to design these cards with their effects intact. How would I design them? Well, first off, if the World Chalice Mika would be a Link 2 with arrows pointing straight up and straight down, um, this would accomplish, you know, and they would all have the effects of, if they're set from the, oh, except Miko. Miko would have the, wouldn't need the effect to summon a Chalice Monster from him when it's sent to Grave because it already has a floating effect built in. Now, um, I think World Chalice Mika would be it would probably have to be a Link 3, if I'm being honest. Um, but let, for all intents and purposes, let's say it's a Link 2. Um, and it has arrows pointing straight down because of um, because you want to... It, it will synergize with your co-links, you know? Um, yeah, and so that's how I would believe that card to be. Now, I would design the uh, M-Duck card, the Fusion... I would also have that be a Link 3 with uh, Nightmare Unicorn Arrows. Nightmare Unicorn Arrows or a Triple Burst Dragon Arrows. Either or. Um, and it would its materials would have to require exactly three Link Monsters just like the Fusion. Now, if the World Chalice Mi er, Miko as a Link 2 for the materials, uh, I would do um, two... World Chalice Monsters and or Vanilla Monsters or Normal Monsters so you can go into them with Shine Balls and things like that to synergize with your deck. And yeah, and that's how we would design these cards, you know. You would need a World Chalice Monster that points straight down um, so you can continue to synergize the whole deck with co-linking uh, for, let's say, your Trigate Wizard. For your Trigate Wizard... And, you know, it would just, you know, it would just be really synergetic. And it would accomplish a lot of the inherent problems that uh, the deck would have if it doesn't have access to certain pieces. 
especially now that Firewall Dragon is gone. So, with all of this being said, again, these cards are still great cards, no doubt. They're great because of how generic they are. However, in the World Chalice deck itself, it has its inherent flaws simply for the fact that they aren't Link Monsters and you're losing Link value. Because you're um, investing Link Monsters, like, you know, in Link or Link material into these monsters and they're not, um, and they don't hold Link material value. Like, they don't hold the extra value for your ability to Link Climb um, into playing the World Chalice deck itself. That's the inherent issue I have with these cards. You know, had these have been Link Monsters, had the M-Duck been a Link 3, had the, if the World Chalice Miko been a Link 3 or a Link 2, um, you know, you could use those ratings um, to have a much easier job to Link Climb and all, you know, all that good stuff that World Chalice wants to do. Because, again, they still are a deck that wants to pump out Link Monsters. You know, uh, somebody in the World Chalice uh, Facebook group says, at first World Chalice was an all-blue deck or all links, and now it's starting to become, you know, all colors of the rainbow. Um, which, you know, a lot of people think it's a good thing. However, as I said before, because of this, um, you are losing... Um, you're losing your deck's flexibility as to what it can do in the long run. You know, so that's why the deck is a lot better staying as a straight link-based archetype. You know, because of this, because you have the flexibility um, in the multitude of situations, because the less links you have, the more linear your strategy is. And that's the, my inherent problem with these decks. Um, these cards again they're still great cards for what they do but they're not completely synergetic to what world chalice wants to do and that's link climbing and building up a uh building up a negation board with things like trigate wizard and all that stuff building the gate boards are fine but you want to be able to do it effectively and you want to be able to have multiple ways to do it multiple ways to pull it off uh multiple ways to get there you know, you know, I don't, you know, I don't feel comfortable with only one path to take, only one way to get into that board. You know, if I have to get to Ritzy and Pitsy just to get to the rest of them, then at some point, uh, my opponent is going to catch on and I will be doomed to fail a few of these times if they just wait for a Ritzy or a Pitsy and all that stuff. So I hope you guys have learned something here. Um, this is why I had to take a lot of time before I decided to make a video on these cards because I really, because they weren't Link Monsters, I really had to sit down and dissect these cards, analyze them as to how they would synergize with the deck before I go and start throwing out any conclusions in the matter. So I want to know you guys' thoughts on this. Um, if I missed something in, regarding, in regards to these cards... Um, let me know down in the comments below. Again, if the World Chalice Miko is definitely going to see a play in World Chalice because of what it does. Because you can use the Vanillas as a tuner, you don't have to splash tuners in your deck. You can search your succession, you can, you know, the you can actually search your extenders, mm -hmm. and it floats. And, you know, it's an all-around great card. But the fact that it's not a Link 2 means it loses... It doesn't have that initial. It doesn't have the link value, you know, in terms of link climbing, and that's one. That's just the only issue I had with Miko, and the you know the biggest problem I had with the M Duck is that it just wasn't a link monster, and it didn't have like link monster with arrows to support uh, co-linking. So with that being said, uh, again, want to know your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching. This is J Money, and I am signing out.